What's up, fellas? My name is Quentin Jones. Uh, I am. I live here in Radcliffe, Kentucky. Uh, and if you were present for Stacey Bonet's fire teaching, um, I go to the same church as her. As I was talking to him, um, Stacy and Felix were my youth leaders when I was back in like. I, I think I came to the church back in like 2003, 2004. And so they said I was one of the um, worst kids that they had, but I don't think they know what they're talking about, man. I was I was definitely one of the best kids, but no. So I, I, I came here back when I was in high school. I came a lot off and on when I was a uh, young kid to like VBS and things like that. And it really um, stuck with me in my early years of high school um, where I received salvation uh, and it's really just been running uh, ever since, you know? And so it's that weird transition of, you know, being in the, in the uh, youth ministry under Felix and Stacy, and then now you're working with Felix and Stacy, you know? So it's kind of that weird thing of like, man, I feel like, you know, I'm still this little kid in, in high school, you know, type of thing, but no, uh, but been married, you know, got saved in the church, been married in the church. Uh, I, my wife, uh, her name is Chelsea. We've been married for seven years. Uh, we have an awesome testimony that, you know, I won't have time to share today because I do want to talk about this topic. But, you know, we have an awesome uh, testimony about being practically born and raised in church and uh, and just making a lot of mistakes. And to, you know, that's my wife. And we, we have two children. And, you know, God has been so good to us. And I'm now an uh, ordained minister as well. And so I'm a minister here in, in the uh, local church as well. But hey, listen, I do want to say this before we get into this topic, okay? I want you all to just really take some time to not only just listen to what I do have to say, but I want you to ask some good and hard questions, right? Uh, I want you to, if there's a question that, it, that comes in your spirit as I'm talking, I want for you to actually take that moment and drop it in the chat and there's going to be some moments where I'm going to I'm going to teach, I'm going to preach. You're going to hear some passion. You're going to hear some fire. I got a little bit of Stacy Bonet in my blood, uh, you know, be, being in that ministry for the last, you know, 15 years. But I want you all, as young men, to really take a moment and really listen and really receive. This is a really tough topic to talk about with men in general because men really don't like talking. If you're a young man and, you know, if your parents or if you're, you know, you can either ever try to get you to, I don't know, just share your heart. It's almost like talking to a brick wall because like, because we're like, no, I'm fine. No, 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 I'm good. Right. And it's, it's like these guys never have any issues, but yet the ladies are just like an, an open book. So, you know, this is a really, really good topic. Um, and this is something that I have battled. You know, if I can just be honest here, um, I have battled this a lot in my younger years and although i found victory in this area this is an area that i can relate to so with all that being said let's get right into the word um if you can open up your bible to first samuel 21 and we're going to read verses 10 through 15. again if you all have any questions please drop it in the chat i'm gonna try to do the best i can to um, stop where i'm at and check that chat message but also, when I do ask a question and I will make it known, hey, I want, I want to ask a question, that means I would like for someone to come off of mute and someone to answer my question. So this isn't going to be, hey, where you just sit here and listen to me talk. I want you all to participate with me, okay? Let's, let's go through this topic together. And what we're talking about today is loneliness. Loneliness is such an interesting topic. Because in a world where we are all so socially connected like never before with our Facebook, with our Instagrams, with our TikTok, and we have followers and, and we got, you know, hundreds and thousands of people that are on our friend list. It's interesting that when you talk to young people, they still feel isolated and separated from the world. It's a crazy thought to know that you can go on your Instagram or whatever your social media platform is, and you can say something that can speak to thousands, but yet you still feel isolated from everyone else. This is no secret. This is no, this is a complete plan of the enemy and about how virtually we can connect with people, but yet we can't hold a conversation with a person because it's awkward to talk about the way we feel. 
So 1 Samuel 21, verses 10 through 15. Let's read this, and I'm going to read a second set of verses. It says, Then David arose and fled that day from Saul. So I want to pause here for a moment and just paint a uh, background for you. So if you don't know the Bible at this point, Saul is really jealous at David because David comes back from killing Goliath, right? And they're saying, you know, David, you know, Saul killed, you know, thousands. David killed tens of thousands. And this spirit of jealousy came over King Saul and he's like, wow, so David is actually better than me. Like, and so this jealousy comes on him. And so now you got David who was now running for his life. So again, in verse 10, then David arose and fled that day from Saul, and he went to Achish, king of Gath. But the servants of Achish said to him, Is this not David, the king of the land? Did they not sing of this one as they danced, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his tens of thousands? Verse 12, David took these words to heart and greatly feared Achish, king of Gath. So he disguised his sanity before them, and acted insanely in their hands, and scribbled on the doors of the gate, and let his saliva run down his beard. Then the quiche said to his servants, Behold, you see the man behaving as a madman. Why do you bring this man to me? Do I lack madman that you have brought this one act in my presence? Shall this one come into my house? Now let's jump over to 1 Samuel 22, the next chapter over, uh, verses 1 through 2. So, David departed from there and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And when his brothers and all his father's household heard of it, they went down there to him. Everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him, and he became a captain over them. Now there were about 400 men with him. That's a really interesting story, right? So you got David, who just killed Goliath. He is basically on his high throne because everyone's like, oh my gosh, this young kid just cut this dude's head off, right? And then, then Saul gets jelly, and he's like, wait, so he kills more people than me? And now he wants to put David's head on the stick. And so David, out of fear, runs. Now, when he runs to the Philistine rulers, he basically goes to try to find a place of peace where he can basically be safe. And I find it interesting that the moment that they said the same song, right, that the people in Israel were saying, it says that David act quickly acted in fear. But then the most interesting thing happened right there. David starts to act like a madman. He's like, and he starts scribbling on walls. And all of a sudden, he's got, yeah, listen, I am a really active preacher, okay? I'm going to paint this picture for you. I want you to just go with the story with me, okay? And he's like, <laughs> and then he's scribbling on walls. And, and they're like, yo, what's wrong with this guy? This guy is loony. And then he has saliva all in his beard. Now, and then you notice in first. 22 it says that david departed from there i'm sorry chapter 22 it says david departed from there and he escaped to the cave of adulam and when his brothers and all his father's household heard of it they went down there to him scholars believe right if you if, if you study this part of the bible scholars believe that david was hiding in this cave for three to six months so he was in this cave for three to six months before people came unto him. Now, can I, can I paint a picture of a cave real quick? I don't know if you've ever been in a cave, but I have. A cave is dark. A cave is muddy. A cave is lonely. A cave is quiet when it's just you. David had him himself and his thoughts in a cave for three to six months alone. The truth is, anyone who was ever in that place, we can all attest that's a dangerous place to be in. Have you ever been so upset? Have you ever felt so lonely? Have you ever felt so depressed that you went into your room and shut the door and you basically hid in your room so no one could talk to you? Have you ever been so angry that you had to basically just leave, basically unplug from the world so you plug up to your thoughts? And listen, if you have you and your thoughts in a depression mindset, is there anyone that can attest that that's a dangerous place to be in? 
Why? Because you think low about yourself. You talk bad about yourself. Why? Because your girlfriend broke up with you, so you're like, man, I'm, I must be some ugly guy. So then you call yourself ugly. You call yourself ugly. And, and, and then all of a sudden, these jokes at what people, you know, maybe said about you in school, about how fat you are, how ugly you are, about how uncool you are, all of these thoughts that were basically in this closet, the door opens, and now it's just you, yourself, and your thoughts in this cave. That room that you're in, that place that you try to run to, is a dark, quiet, and muddy place. And David was in this cave for three to six months by himself. I can attest to you, young men, that is a dangerous place to be in because I have been there before where it was just my thoughts. And I thought low of myself. I thought that I was incapable. I thought that I was never good enough. I thought that God didn't love me. I thought the love of God could never reach me. I thought I was unsavable. I thought that there was nothing good about me. I thought that I would never get married. See, today I'm married for seven years, but if you asked me 10 years ago, I was this young kid. You can ask Felix and Stacey Bonet. They will tell you, I had issues, y'all. I had problems. Listen, I got problems. Pray for me. Pray for a brother. Please help me out. But I was in this cave as a young man, and it led to a form of depression. We retreat to this cold, dark place when we lose our best friends when our best friends stab us in the back. Maybe we had dreams and maybe our dreams were crushed. Maybe, maybe you went out for a high school team and you thought you were gonna make it and you got cut from this high school team and now you feel inadequate. Maybe, maybe you are hurt by your parents because of whatever is going on in your home, right? We, we, we all got this reason why we can retreat to this cave. So what is the cave? Listen to me. A cave is defined by how we all try to isolate ourselves from God in the world. Whatever your reason from the cave, I think we can all agree to this. The reason why we retreat to a cave is because we just want to be alone. And we want to be isolated. And we just want to sit with our thoughts, me, me and myself in this dark corner, in this dark room, and God's going to speak to me. And so we just rather be alone. That cave is actually about how we try to isolate ourselves, not just from the world, but how we think we can really isolate ourselves from God. We think that God can't reach us in this room. We think God can't reach us in this cave. We think his love doesn't reach this deep. And so we, I say we, because I've been there, we try to use this cave as a place of isolation. So I'm going to ask you a question, and this is where I either want you to drop it in the chat or I want someone to come off of mute. Okay, listen, this is a teaching. I am an active preacher. I like some amens. I like some responses. So this is where I want some of y'all to just be bold with me. Okay, so here's a question. Um, what are some of the reasons why that you retreat to your dark cave? Think about your life. Has, has something happened in your life maybe this summer already, right? Get, someone give me an example about maybe why you or other people that you have seen that they basically try to pull back and they will isolate themselves. Can, can, can someone give me something? Our guys said they forgot what the question was. Can you repeat it? <laughs> yeah, what, what, are, what are some of your reasons why, it, like in the past, you have ran into the cave? Into the cave. Into the cave. Why have cave. you ran and hidden? Like, yourself from the world. Yep. Why, what is one reason you've isolated yourself? Isolated. Yes. Bernard, go ahead. When you were super angry? I didn't want to, like, show my emotions to my parents, so I just kept locked myself in. He said he didn't want to show his, his uh, emotions to his parents, so he just locked himself into the room. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. As a man, we're much less of a man if we show our emotions. That's what someone told us. Yeah. 
one of them said he uh he was dealing having a, he had a girlfriend that cheated on him and he got really mad and needed to go to his room so he didn't black out and do do some stuff he didn't need to do yeah yeah i had someone in the chat as well i think uh, i think I, I seen someone say guilt yeah uh maybe you know guilt we feel bad so we try to retreat to a cave yeah been there as well so um so Here's my question to you. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and ask a question be, before our, before we talk about how to defeat loneliness. Um, how do you find victory? If you if you have ever ran into the cave before, I want you to think about that reason. At what point did you find victory, or did you find victory? Like, was it? Maybe like, was it just time? Like did time just heal and eventually you got over it? You know, did you encounter the love of God, the mercy of God, the, the, the grace of God? So like what, what, what happens when you're in this cave, whatever that reason is, whether it's guilt, shame, or you want to try to escape from showing your emotions, at what point do you find victory in that same cave that you ran to? Bernard? Did you hear that, Quentin? No, sir. Okay. He he uh he just said that number one was time for him, and then as yeah. he was taking his time to separate the, he began to reflect, and scriptures began to come to him, and he began to see himself not as ugly, not as you know, not as low, but as God saw him. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Come on, preach, preacher, man. Hold up. <laughs> Man, he's already preaching. Okay, who else? I got I got something here in the chat. It says someone said, "When I seek God through word, prayer, and worship." Yes, Amen. That's good. Who else? Come on, talk to me. I'll talk to me. Come off from you. I want you to share your emotions. It's okay. Okay, it's okay to share what's going on the inside. I Aiden. promise you, the, the ladies dig it. Hey, I want to talk to Aiden. Aiden, go ahead and talk. <laughs> Um, well, usually after getting mad, I'll just go to my room, and then after, like, a few minutes, I just kind of get over it. I don't really stay mad for that long. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's good. We got to learn how to let stuff go. So, let's, let's transition real quick. I want to, this is where I want to spend the majority of my time, is not necessarily talking about the problem because loneliness is a problem, right? We, we, we talked about David and about how David out of fear ran. David acted like a madman and went all over his beard, ran to this cave, and now he's in here for three or six months. And that's the problem. The problem is loneliness, but the answer is so much better. The way that we beat this is where I want to spend the majority of our time. So I appreciate um, those answers. So, Let's talk for the next few moments about three ways how to defeat loneliness. This is going to be really good. If it's not good to you, it's good to me. So I'm just going to give myself an amen right now. Hallelujah, brother. Amen. So listen, three ways to defeat loneliness. Number one, it's going to be so uncomfortable. Listen, tell God how you feel. Woo, listen, guys, don't listen. Men don't like to talk. Listen, I've been in men Bible studies where every man sitting in a circle and everyone just sitting there looking at each other. Because ain't no one got nothing going on. <laughs> Everyone's life is perfect. Listen, number one, tell God how you feel. I I do my 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 Bible's over there. I won't I won't go grab it. In Psalms 142. I want you to, to write that down. That's actually an interesting chapter in Psalms 142. If you actually turn to it, the heading will actually say, David wrote this Psalms while he was in a cave. So in this cave that David just ran into, Psalms 142 was what he wrote. If you go read that, I picked out a, a few verses. It's really cool because David is so upset. And verse three, he's telling God, my spirit is overwhelmed. And verse four, he's telling God, God, there's no escape for me. He says, God, no one cares for my soul. 
how, how come no one likes me? And then in verse 6, he says, my enemies are too strong. Psalms 142 is a Psalms about how David was telling God exactly how he felt. For David telling God about how bad he felt with a raw honesty was the key to experiencing God in that cold, lonely cave. Listen to me. Being in that cave where you're at, the reason why you're there doesn't matter. Because, see, because we can sit here and we can talk the next two or three hours about why and the situations why we ran into the cave. But the reasons why you go into that cave doesn't really matter. What happens is, do you encounter God in that cave? See, because when David was telling God how he felt, he was experiencing God in that same dark, muddy, lonely cave is the same cave where God came and he had encountered with David. Whatever you are going through today, no matter how dark and difficult it may be, it's important that you tell God how you feel. The reason why so many people struggle in their prayer life, listen to me, young people, listen to me, listen to me. I am 29 years old. I have been part of many things, you know, spiritual, especially when it comes to prayer. I'm passionate about prayer. I find it interesting that there are so many believers today who struggle with their prayer life. Because they have this idea of like this being this prayer warrior. You gotta pray for an hour. You gotta pray. You gotta, you know, you gotta rain down heaven. And you know, there has to be brimstone. And people struggle with the thought of praying because they're like, I can never be that powerful prayer warrior. Listen to me. The most powerful prayer that you can do is when you are honest and telling God how you feel. The most effective prayers in my life is when I like to see, I like to get up in the morning about six o'clock, right around sunrise where the birds are chirping and I got to get up and I got to leave my house. I got to leave this place that's comfortable, right? I got to leave this cave and I got to get out and I got to go just have a, a me and God time. You know what the most powerful and effective prayers have been? Was when I'm walking up to God, I'm so angry. God, I'm so frustrated right now. I don't know why I'm so frustrated. I don't know why I just feel like I'm about to snap. I don't know why I'm so short with my wife. I don't know why I'm so short with my kids. I don't know why my job is making me angry. I don't know why my friend who, who we said that we would always be best friends, why he stabbed me in the back. God, why did he do that? I don't understand, God, why, why my friend would talk about me this way. I don't understand how, how in my face they can say they love me, but behind me, they can backbite me. They can spread rumors are about me that doesn't make any sense god now listen those, that's the most powerful prayer because i'm telling god how i feel listen i'm preaching right now i'm preaching yeah baby so feel that passion on you right now the most powerful and effective prayers that i have experienced was when i tell god how i feel because when i tell god how i feel god always meets me and then when i tell god i'm angry he says son receive my peace so here's a question and again, this is where you can uh, drop it in the chat or you can come off of mute, okay? Here's the question. Why do you think we struggle with telling God how we feel? Much less, it's sometimes difficult to get, to get young men to come off of mute and share, you know, what's on their mind. But why, why do you think we struggle with telling God how we feel? Um, I think we struggle with telling God how we feel because we feel like he'll judge us. Mm. That's good. Yeah, Joshua, go ahead. Because when we're sad, we don't think he's listening. Yeah, that's good. That's good. But I think he is. Absolutely he is. Absolutely he is. Oh, yeah. someone dropped something in the chat. Let me, let me see what it said. Because we think we have to be perfect and have it all figured out before we go to him. That is so good. That's so good and that's so true. We, we, God wants us to bring our problems to him. Versus us, because guess what? We would never figure it out. Because then we'll try to make one plus one equals two. But with God, one plus one doesn't always equal two. Because sometimes whenever you go through life's greatest tragedies, that's why we get peace that goes beyond understanding. It doesn't make any sense. So I like that. I like that. Yes. And then we feel that there are bigger problems in the world. A hundred percent facts. 
listen, this is what I know about my prayer life. If it matters to me, it matters to God. We think that we should only go to God when we're having major issues in our life, right? Maybe, maybe our parents are going through a rough time, right? Maybe we hear, maybe we hear, we see our parents fighting all the time. Um, maybe, maybe, you know, uh, you, your parents are maybe talking about you moving to a different state. So you don't want to leave, right? Right. Whatever is major. We, we all have, I'm, I'm going to kill this gnat. This gnat get on my nerves. I'm going to kill it. I don't know where it's coming from. Sorry. Brain. Yeah. Squirrel moment. We think that God only cares if we have big moments that we bring to him. But God cares about the little stuff. Yeah, Joshua, go ahead. Uh, are there some people who only talk to God when there's something bad happening in their life? Yes. Yes. That's good. So true. So true. And it goes exactly with what, what, what I was saying. If it matters to me, it matters to God. God cares. If you're frustrated today, y'all, if you're angry today, if you're hostile today, if you're feeling short today, you don't have to just deal with it in your cave. We got to tell God how we feel. My wife loves when I share my emotions. I don't know why a woman like this. She wants to know what's on my mind. She said, baby, come on, you can talk to me. And I'm looking at her like, but I'm a man. I, I, I can't just tell you my emotions. Like, you know, how's it going to make me look, honey? Like, I tell you what, I'll give you a piece of it, right? So God wants us to share with that. And listen, 1 Peter 5, 7 says this, cast all your anxiety, not some of it, not a few things, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Tell God how you feel. It doesn't make you less of a man. If anything, it connects you more an intimate feeling to our heavenly father. He wants that intimacy. He desires that intimacy. The more intimate you are with our Heavenly Father, the more intimate. Now, listen, one day when you get married, listen, I'm prophesying because one day when you get married to a woman, to a woman, when you get married, she's going to ask you to share your heart. And as a man, I have been there where I've put up so many walls. And I struggled in my relationships with people and my spouse because early part of my marriage, I was too afraid to share my heart. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Number two. So number one was tell God how you feel. That's how we're going to beat loneliness. Number two, recognize that you're in the prison. Psalms 142.7. It's really cool. So if you look at Psalms 142, all those beginning verses, is, is basically uh, uh, David telling God how he feels. In verse 7, here's what he says. Bring my soul out of prison so that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me for you deal bountifully with me. So listen, many of us don't realize that we are indeed in the prison. And if I say right now that you're in the prison, some of you are thinking naturally with your natural mind, like, I'm not behind bars, right? I'm not, I'm not talking through a, a glass, you know, little cage with a phone like that, right? It's not mentally. We're talking spiritually. Spiritually and mentally, you may be in a prison where you are held captive by your negative thoughts about yourself, about other people, and about God. You have to recognize that that cave that you are in is not where your story ends. And that you are in a prison. Because if it holds you captive, if it holds you back from loving, if it holds you back from your purpose, if it holds you back from saying yes to whatever the call of God is on your life, then my brothers, you are in a prison. Because that cave should never hold you back from your calling. And if that cave makes you retreat away from the world where Jesus sent us into, that is a prison. You are locked behind bars and someone has the key. Philippians 4.8 says this. Finally, my brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, 
and if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. So here's a question. What's true? The word of God. What's honorable? The word of God. What's just? The word of God. What's pure? The word of God. What's lovely? The word of God. What's commendable? What's excellent? What's worthy of praise? The word of God. When you're in a prison, it may not be a physical location, but rather how your thoughts have you captive. The way, the way, listen, have you ever been in, in your cave and you had a conversation with someone that didn't go the way that intended and you think about all day about how you should have responded? You're like, oh, oh, next time if they say this, this is, this is what I'm going to say. And we, and, we, and we sit there and we think about the words that someone said to us, whether they were true or whether they were not. We take those words that someone basically threw into our spirit and we basically let it swim around in our mind all day. And we're like, am I, like, am I really not cool? Do people really not like me? I guess that kind of makes sense because no wonder no one texts me. No wonder that every time I call people, no one ever called me back. Hmm. And then guess what? We go down this mind and we convince ourselves of something that isn't true. Recognize. Listen, number two is to recognize that you're in a prison. Real quick. We're, we're, we're almost close to time. Why is isolation a bad place for any person to be in? So again, why is isolation a bad place for any person to be in. Yeah, go ahead, man. Say it out loud. Like, real loud. Isolation is a bad place for somebody to be in because when a lot of stuff goes through your mind, it's like everything can go through your mind. And a lot of people, when they in isolation, then that's when they start thinking a lot, playing different types of music, all types of sad music. That mostly could be leading to suicide or like anything harmful to yourself or to your brain. And too many thoughts, so many thoughts can go in and out of bad thoughts. It, it, it can like damage you. And like, that's how some people go to um, what is called a rehab. Well, not rehab, but they get crazy because they so, they have grown so much and they got so much to think about and they can't, they don't know how to handle it. Yeah. That's so true. So true. We retreat to that place. And guess what? We find a song that speaks to how we're feeling. And all of a sudden, we're in our room like, yeah, yeah, right? Or we're in this room in this dark corner like, my gosh, I'm such a terrible person. And you're right. That's a place where it leads to suicide. That's a place. Listen, isolation is the breathing ground for depression. If you are constantly, or maybe you know someone that's constantly depressed, I can tell you why. It's because they're always alone with, with, with their thoughts. Maybe it's at home. It's, it's crazy from a, from a psychological standpoint. You can be in a room full of 100 people and still feel like you're the only one there and still feel isolated. That's how powerful this mind is. And then I see something in the chat it says, isolation will encourage you to overthink everything, which will lead you to getting into bondage by doing things we should have never been doing or thinking. Woo! Listen, I'm about to, listen. I see your name. I'm not going to say it. But you preaching real good. You, you hit a vein because here's why. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is not in my notes. Have you ever wondered how Maybe not, because I'm a little bit older, so probably not. But I find it interesting that in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, every time that the people of God were left alone to their imagination, they created something that was ungodly. That's why, that's why God got angry, because they took gold and then they made it into a cow, right? They made it into a cow, or they made this goddess, and then they, they made something out of their own imagination. And all of a sudden, that's why Sodom and Gomorrah happened, because why? They were left to their imagination. If you let your, listen, ungodly things will birth when you're left to your imagination. 
That's so good. Listen, you preaching real good, bro. I see you right there. I see you. Come on, man. I see you. I like it. I like it. So uh, let's uh, transition to number three. This is where I want to spend the majority of my time right here because I think this is the this is the biggest key. All right. So number one to defeat loneliness is tell God how you feel. Number two is to recognize that you are in a prison. Number three, here's the biggest one. If you if you hear anything that I'm saying. Anything that I'm saying, I want you to listen to this. Number three is this. To defeat loneliness, you have to help someone else. Ooh, ooh. Yes, you heard me. Write it down. Make a mental note. Take a picture. Snap. Listen, I don't know. Listen, if you want to de defeat loneliness, help someone else. Listen to this. In verse 22, did you catch what I read that after David departed from, from uh, King and then he went to the cave of Agilum, where the scholar says that he hid there for, what, three to six months? Did you catch what happened next? And when his brothers and all his father's household heard of it, they went down there to him. <laughs> and everyone who was in distress, everyone who was in debt, and everyone who was discontented gathered to him, and he became a captain over them. And now there were about 400 men with him. And a few verses later, it says that this became the headquarters of David. Listen, God listens to David as David tells him in Psalms 142 about how he felt. David then recognizes that he, that he is in the place where he shouldn't be because in verse 7, he says, I shouldn't be in this prison. And this is the most craziest response from God. Did God whisper to him and say, it's going to be okay? Because I believe in moments he will. No, he didn't. Did God show up as an angel and says, I'm here and I got your back. Thou says the Lord God, you are a mighty warrior. I believe he will, but he didn't do that. But look what God did. While David was in need of healing, God sent other people that needed help too. I'm going to let that sink in for a second. While David was in need of healing, God sent other people that needed help too. Few of us want people with problems showing up while we are still dealing with our own issues. See, here's the truth about your cave. Your cave may be dark. Your cave may be lonely. Your cave may be muddy. You may be in the reason in, the, in that cave because of guilt, shame, or you feel bad, or maybe you're angry, or maybe you always want to be alone, and so you always got to be separated out from, you know, from, from everyone else. While there's a group of people having fun, you have to be the one that's off in the corner on your cell phone because you just always have to be alone from people. See, no matter your reason in that cave, it doesn't matter because guess what? God expects us to use that same dark cave that we are in is the same dark cave that we will help bring people to a place of freedom. Broken people will come to your doorstep. Your cave may be the reason why you're in there. Your cave may be the reason why that you're depressed. But listen to me, to defeat loneliness, you have to help someone else. Because when David was in his cave, in his lonely place, with saliva on his beard, his family came to him. And look what the Bible says. He became a captain over them. To defeat loneliness, you're going to have your friends in your youth group. You're going to have kids in your neighborhood. You're going to have family members. You're going to have kids in your classroom. You're going to have kids in your school. Listen, whatever it may be for you, people will gather unto you. And people don't gather unto you because you got your life figured out, young people. People don't gather unto you because your life is perfect. No, because while you're crying out to God for healing, God is bringing other people your way that you can heal. To defeat loneliness, you have to help someone else. You may not have all the right answers. You, you don't have to know a thousand scriptures. You just have to have a heart that you want to help. And when you help other people with their problems, with their issues, and with things that are going on in their life, it's amazing how God will bring healing to you.
There are so many believers that think that I can't help people because my life is, is in crumbles, it's in shambles, and you don't know what's going on in my life or you don't know what's going on. But what if I told you that your healing will come when you help someone else? Would you believe me? The same cave that David hid in is the same cave that people came over the hill screaming out his name. Think about this. Listen, I want you to just close your eyes with me for a moment. I, I want everyone to just close your eyes. And I want you just to imagine this picture with me. David is in this cave with his beard, saliva all in his beard, alone and lonely with his thoughts. And as he's telling God how he feels, he hears something. And maybe he tilts his head. He's like, who's calling my name? And all of a sudden, as it as it as it's like David, 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 and then the, the the name David gets louder, and he finds out it's not God. And when he walks out of the cave, it's a ton of people who gathered unto him. Now I want you to open your eyes. You are the David. There is a dying world who needs to know the grace and the mercy and the compassion of Jesus. And it is up to you and I. Listen, tell God how we feel. Yes. Recognize that you yourself are in the prison because if you don't think you're in the prison, you your first are deceived. But of the most important of the three, if you ask me, it's to help someone else. Listen, I'm going to say something that a few of you probably will not understand, but I pray that this parable will take someone to the next level. Listen to me. Let your moment of isolation be the season of consecration. See, in your cave of isolation, you think that you're alone, but this is the way that God operates. God, listen, anyone in the Bible, you can go look at any story. Any person in the Bible that was used by God, God had to first consecrate them, which basically means set them apart. You think that your isolation means that, that you're alone, but in reality, if we have the right spiritual eyes about it, it's God's way of setting us up for consecration. God is using your isolation as a season of consecration. And, in your, and, and so you're not isolated, young people. You are being consecrated unto the Lord. Because in the, in the right hour, in the right season, your friends are going to come to you. Your friends are going to say, help. The, 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 your friends who are lost want to know why you have a hope about you. And now you're ready to share the good news. You have to quit thinking that because your life is in shambles, you can't help other people. That is wrong. Because people gathered unto David in the midst of his own issues. That is the most powerful thing right there. Let your moment of isolation be the season of consecration. God is setting you apart. Whoever that's for, I want you to receive that in Jesus' name. You are in consecration mode. Because in the due season, in the right hour, God is taking you in that same cave and your purpose is coming forward. The vision is being revealed. And then watch, you're going to be released like an arrow into the world in the middle of your issues. I have issues today and I will always have issues, but God still uses me to speak to people all over this state. I have a platform. I have a voice to preach the gospel in the middle of my issues, in the middle of my cave, in the middle of my loneliness. And if he does it for me, you better believe he would do it for you. Galatians 6.2 says this, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burdens. People are gathering unto you. And just because you got issues doesn't mean that we should just push them away, deny them, maybe not give an ear to listen to them. When people come to you, this is the story of David active in 2020. Because in the middle of your cave, people are gathering unto you. And you have the ability, just like me, 
to be a captain over men, not Lord, because there's only one Lord. I said captain, where you can help be an influence to other people. How can you help other people find the mercy and the grace and compassion of God? Be a captain over them. Lead them back to the shepherd. That in your cave, yeah, it's lonely. But in this cave, God's in here with me anyways. And while you're in the fire, you're not in the fire alone anyways because God's in there with you. You're not alone, young people. Loneliness is a real thing. I have battled this. I have battled this so often in my life. The moment I saw one of these topics, when, whenever they, they asked me to pick one, I jumped at loneliness because I know what it feels like to be in a room with your own thoughts. To almost be in a room to where you really think about, listen, if you want to kill yourself, that you've maybe thought about why my life isn't worth it. That if I took my life, no one would miss me. I have been there before. I know what it's like. And I don't make light of loneliness. But see, it's in this loneliness I have found that God's arms have come around me. It's in this loneliness that I have, that I have found that God has never forsaken me and God has never left me. In this same cave that I ran into, that I thought about putting a gun right here, it's the same cave where God met me and God said, my son, you are worthy. I pray that you encounter the same peace of God. And that you come out of your shell. It's time for you to come out of your cave. It's time for you to come out. And it's time for you to let the world see who God has made you and created you to be. There is purpose in you. You were born in this season and this hour for a reason. You were born, the year you were born, into the family that you were born into for a reason. You may not believe it, but you better believe it. This world needs your voice. And there is a world of people that are, that, are in, that are in trouble, that are in sin, that are lost, that are broken. And you're looking for someone to run to, and I pray that that's you. Will you be a captain over people? In the middle of your cave. You may have issues because so do I. But people are coming. And it's our responsibility as believers to help them. Your youth leaders are always here for you. We got issues. But you better believe we got your back, bro. We're going to fight with you. We're going to fight for you. Not just in the physical, but I'm talking in the spiritual. Because in prayer time, I'm lifting you up. I'm lifting up my best friend Elijah in prayer. Because I know what my brother's believing for. So you better believe in my cave and my issues, it's not about me. It's about you. It's about the world. It's about the kingdom. Because I want people to gather onto, not, not to Quentin, but to the Jesus that's in Quentin. It's time that we bear one another's burdens and get over ourselves and get past our issues. And it's time for you to get out of your cave. It's time to walk out. Because when you walk out, you see that there's a world of people. The harvest is ready. It's time to go collect that harvest. Amen. All right. I'm going to go on mute because I feel the anointing. I, and, I, and I just got to stop right now. So, whew. Hallelujah. So we got a few minutes left. We got about two minutes here. Uh, someone want to share with me? Come off of mute and just share a, something that, that you're going to take away from this teaching. What, what spoke to you the most about this?
Uh, I, I want to share something. Uh, so, like, I, I've been in like a time where I, I've just been focusing like on my own uh, issues and stuff, and just my own problems. And um, I knew that, to, you know, like sometimes to, the best way to get out of that bondage is to to serve others. But I never really put it fully like into practice. And now, it, like, this has really, I believe, it's woken a lot of us up to to go out there and to really help others and just like get over ourselves, you know, because it's not about us, it's about other people and to just really go out there and be the person that we feel like we needed, you know, for other people, that that's where healing begins. Yeah, amen. Amen. Appreciate you sharing that. Uh, Andy, are you still out there? Yes, I'm here. I'm All right, amen. I, I didn't know if you want to close or if, if I should be closing. I just. You can close, bro. It is no big deal. Go ahead and close. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm hey, sorry with it. Uh huh. Hey, you, uh, you do whatever you feel like you need to do. If you feel like the Holy Ghost has got something to say, say it. You don't yeah. have to stop immediately. You know? Yeah. Do it. Amen. I, um, you know, we, as men, we've got to get past this thing about our emotions. I don't know who said it was weak. I don't know who said it doesn't mean anything. But, you know, as, as young people, it's crazy. You have every social media platform at your fingertips to connect with people. But yet, I've never seen a more isolated generation than what I see today. You have everything at your fingertips from your phone to tablets to the most powerful devices and computers that the world has ever seen. But yet we're so disconnected from people. We're so disconnected from our parents. We're so disconnected from our youth groups. And we're so connected to Xbox and PlayStation. It's so easy for us to get on a chat, man, on Xbox, man. We can chat about our feelings. We talk about life. But man, let, let, let another man ask you, hey, bro, what's, what's, what's going on in your life? Oh, oh, it's good. That's not the way God designed this. I'm not, I'm not, talking, about being, I'm not talking about being emotional. But I'm talking about just being real. I'm going to be one of the realest guys that, that you're going to meet in your life because I'm a straight shooter. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. I get that a lot from Felix and Stacey. I don't beat around the bush. I'm a, I'm a straight shooter as a preacher. But I'm, I'm believing for that you all will recognize that, you're, that not only are you in a cave, but it's time for you to get out of that cave. Purpose is waiting for you. Some of you are called to be the next preachers, to be the next pastors, to be the next deacons, to be the next door greeters, to be the next sound man, what, what, whatever it is. Some of you have an anointing on your life that hasn't been discovered yet. And the world is waiting for you. And I'm believing that you're going to discover the purpose within you. So let's pray. I want to get you out of here and get you ready to go to your next, your next class. And I, I pray. Come on, come on. Let's just pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we just come before you, God. And God, I pray, God, at the sound of my voice, every person, God, that hears my words, God, I speak to their place of loneliness, God. Whatever cave they, at, whatever cave they are in, no matter how dark, no matter how, how lonely, no matter the reason they are there, Father, may they first recognize that you did not put us here, but you are the key for us to, to getting out of this cave. So Jesus, we call upon the powerful name, God, the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, and we say that your blood, God, has, it has been sufficient 
and by and God, that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So right now, God, virtually, God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I speak, God, to every place that they're in, and I just declare a freedom about them right now. I say that you are free in Jesus' name, and that you are free from your mind, and that you have the mind of Christ, God. And God, we thank you, God, that as your Holy Spirit is dispelling your peace right now, God, that not only do they find victory, but they find purpose, God. Purpose for other people. Purpose for this world, God. God, because that we would help someone else. So God, give them boldness. God, may the word, God, God, may every teaching, may every prophecy that has been spoken over their life, may it come forward right now. May it begin to manifest, God. May every seed begin to produce a harvest right now at the name of Jesus, God, because they were born in this season, in this hour, in this day, for such a time as this, God. God, so may, God, we be bold and honorable, God, and strong and courageous for you. And we say yes to the call of God. And God, we will help our friends. We will burn our schools on fire with your word. And God, may our social media platforms be full of scripture. May our Xbox time, may our conversations with our friends be full of the word. Because it was never about me, Jesus, because you left the 99 for the one. So God, may we have that same attitude and mindset. In Jesus' name, amen. Woo! Hallelujah. I pray that you, that you all receive that. I pray that this word impacts you and that you take this to the rest of your life. So I call you all blessed. I love you all. Go to your next session, fired up or, you know, whatever is next. I don't know, but leave here full of purpose. Amen. I call you all blessed. Thank you. Yeah, everybody, if you're still on tonight at uh, 4 o'clock on YouTube, We'll see you guys there at uh, 4 o'clock Central Standard Time on YouTube. So that's like an hour, right at an hour. We want to see you guys there for our afternoon session. See you guys. Thanks.